And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and if there's one thing I like to talk about, it's food. Food. Whenever someone says, what game should there be more uh, themes about? And I say, food. So consumption is definitely about that. It's food and choices. Now, when I first heard about consumption, I was a little concerned because um, food games tend to be a little preachy, right? Make sure you eat healthy, which, which is true. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be, but sure, 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 heard it before. Consumption's not quite like that. Yes, it talks about eating healthy in it, but it also lets you, if you want to, be someone who eats fast food all the time, and you can even win that way. But at the same time, it does teach them basic principles. It's really interesting. I've not seen a game like it before. But that doesn't mean it's good. Let's check it out. The first thing I want to talk about is points. Uh, the reason I mention this is so you kind of understand how the game works. As the game goes by, you're going to be putting food either into your refrigerator where you want to eat it um, before you, it goes bad. Each round food will go bad at the end of the game. You lose two points for food that's gone bad. Some food goes bad quicker like meats. Other food like water takes forever. But as you eat food, you're going to be placing it in a proper section. So here, for example, is where dairy and eggs go and I got fruits and vegetables will go down here. So we have different types of food. Depending on how much you've eaten at the end of the game will be how many points. So for example, you can see here, if I don't eat any fruits or vegetables, I'm gonna lose 10 points. If I eat only one, I'm still losing 10 points. But if I eat two, then I'm only losing seven points. If I eat three, I'm only gonna lose four. If I eat four, I get a point. And if I eat five or more, I will get five points. And so all the different foods have different things. Uh, vegetables you want to eat as much as possible. Meat you want to eat a little bit but not too much because then you'll run into heart disease and you'll lose points depending if you eat too much meat. And so this is one of the main ways to get points over the course of the game. You can even play with basically some sort of variant. So this here for example is a junk food junkie and so they get points if they, they, if they eat too many vegetables they lose points uh, and they want to eat more meat or you can play with the vegetarian who really definitely wants to eat vegetables but they definitely don't want to eat any meat at all because they'll lose points and they'll get points as long as they don't eat meat. Now over the course of the game, you're also going to be cooking recipes. You'll have recipes that you will get over the game. If you don't complete them, you'll lose points. But if you get the different things you need, and sometimes this one can take one or the other, this could take fats or oils or dairy in this spot. Once you put all these on here, you've cooked a recipe and it's gonna give you points at the end of the game. When you cook a recipe, you'll be taking all the different ingredients from here and putting them in your stomach. And then you have this recipe for the end of the game point-wise. If, if you don't do it, you'll lose points. You also have activities. Activities will take food out of your stomach, essentially out of your body, and you'll place them on here, which again will give you victory points. Not as many victory points as you do these, but it will give you some victory points and it's a way to kind of manipulate the food here and to clear it out as the game goes by. The game is a worker placement game where each round of the game, and you'll see there's six rounds, you're going to be placing various workers either on your player board, uh, and you can put them on your player board. Here I can put, I can just take a food from my kitchen and put it in my body. Here I can make recipes, take recipes and or put ingredients on them, and you can do this one as many times as you want, or take activities and take food from my body and put it on those activities. But you also have a main board where you can place things. I can go down here to the pizza to go area where I get all the food here. And you know, it's gonna be randomly pulled from a bag. So there's gonna be a lot of different food there. You get it whether you want to or not. Or the Chinese buffet, same thing, but you'll take the bottom row or the top row. Uh, there's also gonna be a farmer's market available here on the board. And each round you'll turn over two of the cards depending what round it is. And then you go here. And for example here, I just put two water and some sweets directly into my body, or I put two vegetables and some nuts into my kitchen. And so that's a way to get more ingredients. The other way to get ingredients is by going to the market, going grocery shopping. So when you go grocery shopping, you're going to roll two dice. And you're going to place them like this, and you can buy anything in that row or column for a dollar. You have six virtual dollars that you can spend, 
and you can buy anything in this row or this column for a dollar, anything out of the row uh, for a three dollars. Now, every time you buy something, it gets covered up with one of these tokens. And maybe something will be completely covered up, but let's say I really want fats and oils, well, I can buy that for $5. So you're usually able to get at least two things from the market, but as, e as the round progresses, more and more of these will get covered up. This is cleared every round, and there are ways to manipulate it. So speaking of manipulation, these are the main actions that you can take. You'll see the different activities and recipes that you can have. But what the game has at the beginning of each round is players are going to be picking, and you have to pick a different one each turn, one of these special people, a kitchen assistant, personal shopper, restauranteur, executive chef, fitness coach, or life coach. And each of them has a special ability that you can use. Like here, when you cook, you can put an extra ingredient on a recipe. When you shop, you can take an extra marker. Uh, you can put out an extra marker and take the food support from the supply. Or you can modify one of your dice. I don't like it to be six. I want it to be five instead. When you go out, you can substitute a food token when you're the restauranteur. When you cook, you can ignore a food token on a recipe. When you work out, I can put an extra token out. And again, each of these has two things. So at the beginning of each round, players will be picking these in turn order, which one they want, and you can't keep the same one twice. You can, and then players will place out their workers, either on their boards or going out here collecting food or trying to eat food. And you just do that for six rounds. After six rounds are over, you're going to score points, like I already showed you, listed on here, uh, for points for recipes and things that you've accomplished. And you're also going to get points for activities that you've done for groups of different types of activities that shows there with the symbol. And there's a scoring card that shows you the eight different symbols. And so if you have one of each of the eight symbols, you score 25 points. And you can score for multiple sets. There's also a little expansion for the game and different things that you can add in. There are goals here where you can try to do these goals and if you're first or second you'll get bonus points at the end of the game. There are ways to modify this. You might have a seafood allergy or dairy sensitivity or gluten free or nut allergy. You place these on your board and it will change the point totals for those. There is a freezer that you can have where you'll be able to stick meats in so that you don't have to lose them every turn because if you don't eat meat the same turn you buy it you're going to have some problems. There are special cards you can put in the game that are more interactive, but essentially it plays the same way. I've played both with and without the expansion, and I like the addition of it. The game has an insert where you're going to be able to store all these tokens. I like the little tokens, and they're, you know, they're both a different color and have a different picture on, so they're very easy to tell apart uh, what each of them are. What I really like about this game are the recipes. I'm a big person who I like food, and I think they did a really good job. Every single recipe has a different picture on it. They look realistic. They look cool. <sighs> Shaved ice, pork chops and applesauce, fizzy water, straw. Mm. Well, some of these things don't look that good, but Brussels sprouts with pecans. I don't want the pecans, but I do like Brussels sprouts. Hot dog with everything. Almond butter and jelly sandwich. Huh. This is like fancy food. But anyway, that's cool. And then the, the pictures of the activities. You know, they're not as interesting, I guess, but they, they work. And I think the art, the whole board looks really nice. It's easy to get into this game. The theme of the game is really strong. And so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the components. Okay, so first of all, great theming. Love it. Every part of this game, the theme is brimming out. You sit there, you eat food, you eat too much meat, chance of heart failure, you eat too much dairy, problems with this, and that makes sense. You don't want to eat too much of one food, uh, except I guess you can eat as many vegetables as you want, and uh, you know, wheats and grains you want to eat a ton of, and you can never have too much water. But you're kind of doing this balancing act here, and you're doing some very basic things like collecting resources to do recipes, but it makes sense, and it also makes sense that working out will help you work some of this stuff out of your body to some degree and help you be a healthier person. So the theme here, I think, is extremely strong. Even going to the restaurant, you go to the Chinese buffet, who knows what you're going to get there. I really enjoy how strong the theme is for this game. Theme alone doesn't make a great game, though, so let's take a look at the mechanisms of the game, and I think they're fine. It's a worker placement game. There's a, there's, I have one problem with the game and one niggling problem. The niggling problem is the farmer's market. There are three piles. You turn over the top two, 
So, you know, you go to one farmer's market and get three things, another three things. I just think it's weird that there's three piles and there's only ever two active at any one point ever. So why not just have two piles and you turn over the top card each time? I just thought that was odd that pile A and C, we turn over the top card. Pile A and B, we turn over the top card for round two. And it's not like they're that different. I don't feel like I'm going to a different market. That's small, not a big deal. The bigger problem I have is the market. This is a worker placement game, lots of different actions you can choose. Whenever you go to the market, the game kind of screeches to a halt as the person who goes there sits there and they have $6 to spend and they want to get as much as they can. So they're looking at the columns, they're thinking about that. That I found to be a little problematic, uh, that it kind of slowed the game down a bit to the point where someone went to the market and be like, next person's turn, unless you're going to the market too. But that, that's not that big of a deal. Just be warned that that's in the game. The rest of it is fascinating to me, getting more recipes. You don't want to take too many recipes, and you can also go for different strategies. Just go to the Chinese buffet and pizza, eat out. Not to mention going to the pizza place, lets you place your, mar your, your marker there somewhere else after everyone else has placed their markers, which is cool if there's an open spot to go to, but you have to eat all that food at the pizza place. But you could eat a lot of food and just try to work it off. Just eat and work off. And then, what specialty person will you take? All of them, some of them sound better than others, but at, as the game progresses, you will find at some very specific points, you want the life activities coach or you want the restauranteur, whatever it is. So there's, I, I think there's a lot of replayability in this game. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the consumption. I think it's a lot of fun. It's, an, it's a neat theme. I know this theme doesn't appeal to everybody, and this game hasn't really been getting a lot of buzz. But it's one that I want to bring to the table more. I just like how it looks. I like the idea of the theme. It feels flavorful, excuse the pun, and interesting. But the gameplay itself is also a lot of fun. Check it out. Dice Tower Judgment approved.